This here is the Lewis structure for PF5. You can see five single bonds around the phosphorus and then the five fluorines surrounding phosphorus with uh, three lone pairs on each fluorine. Now the next couple questions about molecular geometry and electron pair geometry can be answered by looking at some of the information I gave you in Blackboard. Information on electron pair geometry and molecular geometry can be found in uh, tutorial videos, etc. under Quiz 5, because Quiz 5 uh, covers Chapter 4 also. And here's a document that you could download, print out, or view right on Blackboard that describes the different kinds of electron pair molecular geometries. Electron domain is electron pair. Molecular geometry is just molecular geometry. Uh, so in the case of um, PF5, there are five bonds around the central atom. As I was saying, there are five single bonds around the central atom. And if you think of this, A here is the central atom. B are the terminal atoms. An example here is uh, PCL5. You could substitute chlorine for fluorine and pretty much have the compound you, qu you questioned. So this could be the, a model of P, PF5. So if that's the case, we look across here and say, okay, there's no non-bonding or what they call lone pairs around the central atom. A lone pair would be an example like down here where there's one lone pair sticking out, okay, one lone pair, and four single bonds. In this case, there's four, I mean, excuse me, there's five bonding domains or five single bonds. Therefore, the uh, electron domain, electron pair geometry is trigonal bipyramidal, and because there's no lone pair, non-bonding electrons around the central atom, the molecular geometry is also trigonal bipyramidal. Now, to learn about how to recognize all this stuff, I encourage you to uh, view some of the videos I made uh, included in this folder, which are up here, predicting molecular geometry, uh, Lewis structures, uh, examples one and two, or Lewis structures one and two, and uh, that would help out, I think. So if I go back to the problem now, I type in trigonal, if I can spell it right, bipyramidal, and because there are no lone pairs around that central atom, molecular and, oh, what did I spell it wrong? There we go. Okay, so two words and spell it correctly. Email me if you have more questions. Now I'd like to show you a way of predicting molecular geometry. First, start off with the formula. And from the formula, draw the Lewis structure. Then with references in your book and examining the Lewis structure, you could predict the molecular geometry. So let's start off with CO2. Carbon is the central atom, CO2, with two oxygens at either end. Now, examine the Lewis structure with re reference to the central atom, carbon, and count the number of regions of electron density around the central atom. In this case, there are two regions of electron density around the carbon. And regions of electron density include a single bond, a double bond, a triple bond, or a lone pair. All of these each are one region of electron density. The 
So in this case, we have two single bonds, uh, excuse me, two double bonds, so we have two regions of electron density. Now, look at a reference in your book, and you'll see that when there are two regions of electron density in this fashion, the predicted molecular geometry is linear. Next, let's try this formula here, CH2O. The Lewis structure of this formula is C double bond O with two hydrogens. Identify the central atom as carbon and realize that there are no electron pairs around carbon, but there are one, two, three regions of electron density around the central atom. Remember, one single bond or one double bond are considered each a region of electron density. So there are three regions of electron density, and I'll abbreviate it RED. And that's the case. Looking at the reference in your book, you find that this is a trigonal planar arrangement of electron density. And specifically, this is planar electron pair geometry, sometimes called trigonal planar. Let's look at C2H4. In this case, there are two carbons, double bonds, and each carbon has two single bonds with hydrogens at each end. In this case, we have two carbons, and they're both behaving as central atoms. So the question here is, what's the molecular geometry around each carbon atom? Well, they're both in the same electrical or electron environment, in that they have two single bonds and a double bond. Two single bonds and a double bond. Therefore, they each have three regions of electron density around. So three regions of electron density, like the previous example, means that the electron or the molecular geometry around each carbon is trigonal planar. And that, again, that is because there's three regions of electron density around each carbon. Let's look at these two examples, CH4 and H2O. CH4, Lewis structure, looks like this. Where carbon is the central atom. and four hydrogens act as terminal atoms. And there's one, two, three, four regions of electron density around the central atom, carbon. So the number four corresponds to tetrahedral, and there's subcategories of tetrahedral, and they are tetrahedral, pyramidal, and bent. And in this case, because there's four single bonds, which make up the four regions of electron density, the molecular geometry is tetrahedral.
I like to do water alongside. Water has Lewis structure with oxygen in the center, and oxygen as the central atom. It has two lone pairs. So oxygen has one, two, three, four regions of electron density around it. So like CH4, H2O also has four regions of electron density. And because of that, it is also tetrahedral. But because of the lone pairs around the oxygen, the subcategory of tetrahedral for water is called bent. So it's tetrahedral, but it's bent. Specifically, molecular geometry is bent. As opposed to CH4, where there are no lone pairs, it's simply tetrahedral.